Dr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi, Member of Parliament in the Rajya Sabha, eminent jurist, now joining us on this broadcast. Uh, Dr. Singhvi, I am not fully certain I understand Rahul Gandhi's legal strategy because you've gone to court asking for bail. There were some, uh, there were some suggestions from Congress quarters that he may want to surrender, that he's not interested in taking bail, that he wants to fight this legally. If bail is what you sought, why couldn't have this been done earlier, around the 23rd, when the order came out? You could have done last week what you've done today. Uh, Rahul, I am so grateful for the unsolicited advice coming from all quarters. BJP, supposed Congress advice, all and sundry. Let me make two or three things very clear. Uh, Doing an actual litigation is very different from giving unasked gratuitous advice. Number one, what has escaped everybody, especially those from the BJP who are giving us this advice about the nine days delay between 23rd and now, when the appeal is listed, a little more than nine days. Uh, what is forgotten by them is that, and forgotten by a lot of people today, you notice the deliberate abstention by the complainant and his BJP backers today the only object of this was to delay further so that notice would formally have to be issued by the appeal court sessions court and the notice would have to be served so that's the first clear evidence of delaying tactic and i am predicting to continue though the judge has been very right and very correct in giving the the, the complainant a right to file a reply till 10th and before so the 13th the matter is taken up i predict and i'd be happiest if i'm wrong that they will try further delaying tactics. And that's the real message of today. Number two, uh, who has told these gratuitous advice givers that Rahul Gandhi will do this and that? Fortunately, it is us who are advising him and not those people. Rahul Gandhi got bail on the first day or got a suspension of sentence on the first day. He could have waited till 21st when that period of 30 days expires. Today, since he was appearing, in a proceeding which has two limbs. One is stay of conviction. The other is also stay of sentence possible today. He simply continued and got that request today through so that, that what was given earlier on 23rd continues. What is so extraordinary about it? No, so what is his legal strategy? As best as you can outline it for us in the public domain, what according to you is Rahul Gandhi's legal strategy from here on? He stands disqualified as if things stand the way that it is, uh, he won't be able to fight the next election. Are you hoping so to get this verdict overturned? So, I, so you've heard two points of my strategy, haven't you? One is the delaying tactic of the BJP. The mm -hmm. second is the stay of sentence continued. Third, the focus, as I've said before, in, this, in the one week or 10 days which it took to file the appeal, and everybody ignores the translation, not only of the judgment, but of the evidence, the logistics, the person drafting the appeal, filing it, moving it, and we were having a lot of fun on television channels by you know, people advising us otherwise. Uh, the only strategy which I have to, talked about is that the focus is on stay of conviction. Now, I can't help it if it takes at least a few days to file the appeal, and the meanwhile, the government and the other authorities of the Lok Sabha Secretariat hot puts it to declare a disqualification. It doesn't mean that I'm obliged to file a half-baked appeal because I'm racing against time to prevent the disqualification. In practice, although the disqualification means with the session all but over, in practice what it means is that they were able to snatch the house away from him on a certain date. There's no parliament to attend or not much of parliament to attend. Now, for that, the only thing is a stay of conviction. And the day we get a stay of conviction, we will have an automatic cessation of disqualification. That's consequential. That's decided. Now, obviously... The so will you try that in the Sessions Court? Will you go to a higher court? Do you intend to go to the Supreme Court for this? Why? We are in the Sessions Court. Where is there to go? We are in the Sessions Court for that very purpose. Today, the notice issued, which was not required but for the dealing tactics of BJP, is on our stay of conviction application. The date given till 10th for them to file a reply is on our state stay of conviction application. Now the, the date for 13th April to argue the matter is for a stay of conviction application. The BJP's now, argument is that this is Rahul Gandhi's comeuppance because when he tore that ordinance promulgated by the Manmohan Singh government, it is exactly <laughs> that same law for which uh, he's been disqualified. It's not as if 
uh, the speaker's office has done anything out of turn. The moment the conviction is uh, read out by the sessions court, he formally stands disqualified and the, uh, the speaker uh, merely implemented that offer and therefore it's wrong for the Congress and for you to try and blame the BJP government for acting in haste. Nobody is saying that disqualification does not follow a conviction. Nobody is saying that. That's elementary concept. But is it written in the law that you will, it is an empowering position, you can disqualify immediately after two days, after four days. Good governance and good practice requires that you give the man reasonable time to file an appeal. We don't mind. Let them disqualify him, doesn't matter. He's still going for the appeal of stay of conviction. And when that happens, automatically this disqualification will go. Mm. But do you know the number of cases, Rahul, where conviction has happened and where they choose, there is no disqualification order for days on end. There are any number of such cases. Sure. So we understand that, but nobody is blaming them legally. They have the right to disqualify immediately. All I'm saying is that people advising us that Rahul Gandhi took 8, 9, 10 days to file an appeal, it takes time to do this logistically. If at that time you disqualify, you disqualify. None, get back. none less than the law minister has accused Rahul Gandhi and the Congress of turning this into a publicity charade that you're basically trying to take multiple chief ministers, Priyanka Vadra comes along, that you turn this into some kind of a PR tamasha as part of your politics and he went to the extent of saying that you're trying to pressurize the judiciary. You know, but for the fact that it's a constitutional post holder. Uh, who's making this allegation, I think it would be laughed out. It would be a laughable thing, not dignified by a reply. But since the sitting law minister who has made it, I think what is laughable are his attacks on the basic structure. What is laughable are his attacks saying that there should be a member of the government sitting in the collegium. That's really what is more laughable. But as far as this is concerned, you tell me one thing. Have you seen the letter which Rahul Gandhi wrote in reply to the eviction notice? Can a politician be more polite? If he's a former president of an All India Party, one of the oldest parties in this country, and three constitutional post holders, chief ministers, accompany him as the leader of a major party in this country, who is the BJP to object? Did they come and intimidate the court? Did they raise Dara's inside the court or outside? Having tried to gag Rahul Gandhi and several other leaders inside and outside parliament, on free speech, is Mr. Rijuju and his party now trying to gag their right to association, the right to free movement? If Priyanka Gandhi, another leader and the sister of Rahul Gandhi accompanies, who is Mr. Rijuju to say that? I hope that's not his best argument on the merits, that people accompanied him to show solidarity peacefully, in a gentlemanly manner, in a legal democratic manner, exercising constitutional rights of association, movement. So I don't see the point of this except completely rash comments of which we've been hearing again, again and again every day from constitutional post holders. You would have seen the order from a Pakistan court on the issue of sedition. Are you hoping that this leads to a larger debate on criminal defamation, an order from the Supreme Court on outdated statutes like sedition, so it becomes bigger because if Rahul Gandhi can be disqualified and convicted uh, for the kind of comment that he made, it really narrows the space for free speech in the political context in India. See, I'm not used to making rash comments or comments not based on record, so I have three answers to your point. Point one, this is not the proceeding for what you are saying for that. Sure. This is the proceeding about his appeal against conviction on the main matter and his stay of conviction as far as the interim is concerned, apart, of course, from stay of suspension, stay of sentence. This is not the proceeding which will decide the constitutional validity, as lawyers call it, of sections 499 and 500. Point one. Point two, however, there is a already an existing judgment called Subramaniam Swami versus somebody, where ironically I defended these sections and a judgment of the Supreme Court where I succeeded, which has held the provisions to be constitutional. So in an appropriate future case, the larger debate of whether these provisions are constitutional or not will have to be decided by the Supreme Court by a larger bench because there is already a governing bench in a judgment authored by former Chief Justice Deepak Mishra upholding the constitutional validity. Thirdly, uh, you know, we rightly criticize uh, Pakistan for so, so many things. But 
always remember there are things to learn from everyone. Certainly in the area of sedition, just because it is Pakistan, I don't think we should stop learning from their courts. Our courts have felt the same way, but they've not walked the talk yet in actually striking down the sedition provision. They have done almost that by an interim order passed by our Supreme Court saying that this provision will not be applied to the several cases pending or may arise in the future. That is virtually rendering it in the interim to a dead letter. But they've not struck it down. The Pakistan court has struck it down. And it's a common provision, remember, from our common British heritage. So there's always something to learn from the worst examples. And Pakistan is once an example for sedition law. And lastly, uh, I think, yes, there is now scope for a larger debate, despite the validity of 499 having been upheld already by the Supreme Court. We have never had the kind of misuse of these provisions as in this government. And that is what gives rise to a need for a larger debate. Okay. You have never had, uh, Rahul, and you know That's not entirely correct. Uh, governments of all hues have misused the law, including the UPA government of the past, your governments in Maharashtra. The misuse yes. of this law has been rampant and there are cases galore. So don't blame this government alone. All governments have done this, sir. You didn't allow me to complete my sentence. Okay. I repeat, I repeat, no. When I was completing my sentence, I was saying no government in the past has applied this law against public figures in politics is the point I wanted to make. Yes, it has been applied against citizens or outside parliament. But here today, you are having public figures, A, B, opposition public figures, C, speeches given in political movement in respect of public interest in which sentences are plucked out, and D, applied almost entirely to the political opposition. Of course, E is within Parliament as well as far as privilege is concerned. Okay. This combination of A to E has not happened before. The examples you are talking of are no doubt true of civil society or certain NGOs or other organizations. Even there, of course, the degree has nowhere been as rampant as in this government since 2014. But yes, I accept there have been some cases. But there have been never cases in, 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 as far as public figures are concerned of political speeches being hauled up for defamation in this contrived manner that one person files in Patna, one files in Rachi, one files in Surat, uh, for a case where the three named persons don't file anything. So a community angle is taken. Okay, so in any case, criminal defamation needs to be looked at, the law of sedition needs to be struck down. If Pakistan can do it, Britain's already done it, the sooner we can do it, the better. But you're saying that's not linked directly to this case. We'll track what happens from here. Dr. Singhvi for joining us with your thoughts on a busy day. Thank you very much.